Hey, Amelia, are you free today? Can you do me a favor? Hi, Mom. What's going on? Well, my garden is in a bit of a state at the moment, and I was hoping you could come over and help me take care of it. Oh, I see. What exactly do you need me to do? The weeds are growing like crazy, and I have to go out for a while. Could you please come over and take care of them for me? I would appreciate it if you could finish before I get back. Oh, and if you're on the way to my house, please buy me some fruit. Make sure it's fresh and ripe. Well, I wish I could help you, but I'm feeling very sick today. I don't think I can get out of bed, let alone drive to your house. Again? You haven't been feeling well at all lately. All I've heard lately are excuses about why you can't come and help me. Sorry. If you can't even take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of my son? I bet James doing all the work around the house these days since you're sick all the time. You're not faking it so he does everything, are you? No, Mom. I really haven't been feeling well. Let me educate you on what it takes to be a wife. Sometimes you need to work yourself into exhaustion for your husband and your family. Put your own feelings behind you. Just because you don't feel good doesn't mean you can slack off from your responsibilities. Take some medicine and get over here to pull these weeds. I don't think medicine will make me feel better, Mom. I feel really queasy. I can't leave my couch. I'm not interested in hearing any more excuses, Amelia. Even if your stomach is upset, you need to do it. Suck it up and get over here. Mom, I told you, I'm not coming. If you lived down the street, maybe it would be different. But your house is an hour away. So what? Mom, I don't think I can make it without getting sick. Like I said, I've been in really bad shape lately. From now on, please text James if you need anything. Excuse me? So basically what you're saying is, let James handle it? He's too busy with work. You, on the other hand, just stay at home all day. You have plenty of free time, which is why I ask you. James and I have already talked about this, Mom. Since I haven't been feeling well lately, he told me that I should rest and focus on my health. He said he would take care of everything else. Please understand that. That sounds a bit selfish, if you ask me. Sometimes I get sick too, but you never see me take a day off from my responsibilities, do you? Plus, I'm far too busy to waste my time doing things like pulling weeds. Take today, for example. I have my tennis lesson with Camilla. Is that why you won't be home all day? Exactly. My instructor said that I've made a huge improvement in my serve, and that's why Camilla comes with me too. She's trying to have kids as well, and we both pray for her to get pregnant every night before we go to bed. Yeah, but she doesn't need infertility treatments like I do. In fact, the other day she said she heard it's better to rest as much as possible when going through the type of treatment that I'm getting. She knows how hard it is to conceive and she wants the best for me. Why are you even trying to have kids right now? You should wait until Camilla has them first. Her baby would be way cuter than yours anyway. On second thought, maybe you should stop getting those treatments for now. It's a waste of time and money. Or at least until Camilla has her first precious baby. Wow. Mom, that's really hurtful. Oh dear, it's already time for me to leave for tennis. This conversation has gone on longer than expected after hearing all of your pathetic excuses. Anyway, do what you need to do so that you can feel better and get over here to help me around the house. Like I said before, Mom, that's not going to happen. Don't talk back to me, young lady. Do as I say. If you don't turn your attitude around, then maybe it would be best if you came to live with me so that I can teach you how to act like a proper housewife and not to mention, teach you some respect. I didn't mean to disrespect you. Poor James. He has such a lazy and selfish wife. You should do your best as a housewife and make him happy. That's your job. You need to change your attitude and be more grateful. Amelia? My mom just texted me, and she's complaining about you not coming to clean the house for her. She said that you not only didn't come, but also showed an unpleasant attitude. Is that right? Oh no, not again. She's playing the martyr card. You know how manipulative she can be. I think it's time to break the news to her. She needs to know I'm pregnant. Do you really think so? I'm not sure I want to tell her, but I guess we have to. If we don't say anything, she's going to keep harassing you. You don't have to reply to her when she sends you those nasty messages. I can't just cut her off. She's all alone. What if something happens to her and she needs our help? I understand that, but ever since we tied the knot, she's been asking about you so much more. It would be different if she was polite and respectful, but it seems like she's ordering you around. I think she's just depressed. Ever since your dad died, she's changed. That's probably part of it. If I weren't so sick, I'd help her out. Right now, the nausea is unbearable. Maybe when it passes, I could go over and do some chores for her. You're so kind, Amelia. You'd help anyone if you could. 
We should tell her now so she'll back off a bit. You don't need this stress on top of feeling awful all the time. The only thing you should focus on is our little one and your well-being. You're right. I'm just worried about hurting your sister's feelings. I know she's been trying to conceive too. She'll be happy for us, Amelia. Don't worry about her. They've been struggling, just like we did. They might even start fertility treatment soon. I'm sure she'll be happy for us, but it's still hard to see others get pregnant when you want it so badly but can't. And then there's your mom. She'd flip out if we told her we were having a baby before Camilla. She said she's praying every night for her to get pregnant first. She wants Camilla to give her the first grandchild, not me. I can't believe she said that to you. She's crossed the line this time. Maybe we should just cut her off and never talk to her again. I know you're angry, and I appreciate you standing up for me. But you know she won't let go that easily. She knows where we live, James. She'll show up at our door and cause a scene. Or she'll keep calling and texting you, trying to guilt trip you into seeing her. And then she'll be even nastier to me when you're not around. You know I'm the one who has to deal with her most of the time. Mmm, yeah, you're right. Sorry, that was a stupid idea. No, it's not a stupid idea. It's sweet that you want to protect me. Most husbands wouldn't dare to confront their own mother for their wife's sake. I'm so lucky to have you. I just wish we could all get along, you know? Unfortunately, I think we're past that. She's too stubborn and set in her ways. We've tried everything, but nothing works. I hope she doesn't take it out on Camilla for not having a baby before us. Who knows what she'll do? She's unpredictable and irrational. Yeah, I guess so. I just wish it didn't have to be like this. Trust me, I would love for everyone to get along. That's not up to us though. The ball is in her court. And it doesn't seem like she wants to change her behavior. You're too good of a person to say anything. I'll take care of her from now on. I was also thinking, maybe it's best we move once the kid is here, as it is right now. She's working you like a slave. Yeah, I suppose that would keep her away from us. Exactly. And you know what? I think we should move sooner rather than later. We don't want to deal with the hassle of moving when you're about to pop. And we could use a bigger place for the baby anyway. I'll check out some listings online tonight and see what I can find. I'll also give her a call soon and let her know what's going on. I'm not ready to cut her off completely, but this is her last chance to shape up or ship out. Okay. Thank you for doing this, James. I'm sorry that you have to go through this because of me. Hey, don't be sorry. This is not your fault at all. This is my mom's issue, not yours. And I'm going to sort it out, once and for all. Trust me, okay? You don't need this kind of stress in your life right now. You need to focus on yourself and the baby. That's the most important thing. Are you sure you want to tell her? Maybe it would be better if we told her together. Don't you think she'll get mad and blame you for everything? Let her get mad and blame me. I don't care anymore. I'm not going to let her ruin this for us, Amelia. This is supposed to be a happy time for us. Remember, we're having a baby. A beautiful baby that we made together. And I'm not going to let anyone or anything spoil that for us. Especially not my mom. Thank you so much, James. You're amazing. I love you. I love you too, babe. More than anything. And I'm going to protect you and our baby from anyone who tries to hurt you, even if it's my mom. You're so sweet. Thank you for being so supportive and understanding. Of course, babe. Anything for you and our baby. Aw, you're the best. <laughs> Don't work too hard, okay? You're going to need all your strength for your showdown with your mom. Amelia, can we talk for a minute? Good morning, Mom. How are you doing? I just found out from James. You're pregnant, and you didn't tell me? Yes, I'm pregnant. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. I was waiting for the right time. It's okay. I understand. The first trimester is really hard. You must have been feeling sick and tired all the time. Well, it hasn't been easy. I know, honey. And I'm sorry for being so mean to you lately, especially about wanting Camilla to have a baby before you. That was wrong of me. But when I heard you were pregnant, I was overjoyed. I didn't care who gave me my first grandchild, as long as it was healthy and happy. I've been doing some soul searching this past week, and I realize I've been treating you unfairly, and I want to apologize and congratulate you on your pregnancy. Wow, Mom. That's very kind and generous of you. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. You're welcome, sweetheart. You deserve it. And I have a small favor to ask you. It's not because I'm trying to butter you up or anything. I really need your help. Oh, sure. What is it? Is everything okay? Well, actually, I have to go to the hospital. What? Why? Are you sick? No, no, nothing like that. I just broke a bone in my leg. Well, technically, it's a hairline fracture. Oh no! 
How did that happen? You must be in so much pain. It's karma, is what it is. Karma for being such a witch to you lately. At my age, it's not as simple as putting on a cast and walking it off. I might need to stay in the hospital for a while. And I hate to ask you this when you're already dealing with pregnancy symptoms. But could you please bring me some things to the hospital for me? I don't have time to pack everything before I leave, and it's too much for me to handle right now. Of course, Mom. I'm feeling okay today, actually. When do you need me to come? Really? You're a lifesaver. Could you come by this afternoon? Sure, no problem. But just in case I start feeling sick again, I might have to call James and ask him to bring everything for me. No! Don't tell him anything! What? Why not? Because we're not on speaking terms right now. We had a huge fight over the phone yesterday. He said some things that really hurt me, and I don't think he'll help me even if you ask him nicely. Oh wow. I had no idea. But don't you think he'll be concerned if he finds out you're in the hospital? No, he won't care. He'll probably be glad that I'm out of his hair for a while. Mom, that's not true. He loves you, even if he doesn't always show it. Well, he has a funny way of showing it then. So don't tell him or Camilla anything about this. Promise me. Mom, I don't know. This sounds serious. Maybe we should let them know what's going on. They might want to help. No, trust me, they won't. They'll only make things worse. The only thing I need from you is to bring me some stuff to the hospital. After that, the doctors and nurses will take care of me, and I won't bother you again. Mom, are you sure? This doesn't sound like a good idea. Yes, 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 I'm sure. Don't worry about me. I'm tough as nails. A broken bone won't stop me. It's not like I have cancer or something. Just bring me what I need and then leave me alone. Don't worry. Okay, if that's what you want. Send me a list of what you want me to bring and where to find it in your house. And tell me which hospital you're going to and what room number you'll be in. I'll get everything together and bring it over to you later. If I suddenly start to feel sick, I'll let you know and we can figure out what to do. Thanks a bunch. You're the best daughter-in-law ever. I'll text you everything as soon as I can. Amelia, how long are you going to hide from me? You are a two-faced person. I can't contact James either. What's the matter with you guys? Ugh! Oh, hello, Mom. How's your leg? Broken! I've been waiting for you at the hospital this whole time. No, you haven't. I know you're lying. In case you forgot, our intercom has a camera. You seem to be standing just fine. My leg didn't hurt that much that day. Unbelievable! What's the big idea? I should be asking you that. Why did you call me down to the hospital where you weren't actually staying? What type of horrible plan did you have for me and my child? What nonsense are you talking about? Or are you intentionally accusing me just because I treated you badly in the past? Wendy, enough with this victim mentality. It's a shame you didn't pursue a career in Hollywood. The other day, I received a strange text from Camilla's husband. He mentioned that you went to their place and asked to use their printer. When he checked what you were printing, it turned out to be a list of things harmful to pregnant women. Oh, I guess the jig is up. My plan was so close to being a success. What's that supposed to mean? You know, if you harmed me or my baby, that would make you a criminal. What were you planning? Something that was far better than having a pathetic, worthless woman give birth to my grandchild. You just had to go and get knocked up before Camilla, didn't you? Do you have any idea how much energy I put into making sure Camilla had her baby first? And yet God answers your prayers instead of mine. If you were a decent person, you would have waited until she was pregnant first. Camilla thinks the complete opposite. She was ecstatic that I finally got pregnant. I doubt that. Every time her... Every time her time of the month came, she was always so down and gloomy that she'd have to try it again to get pregnant. Probably because she didn't want any more pressure from you. She wanted it to be over just as much as she wanted to actually have a kid. She told me it was a nightmare dealing with you. She said you'd come banging on her door every month to check and see if she was pregnant yet. She and I are always on the same page for everything. When I told her to get good grades in school, that's what she did. When I told her what university I wanted her to go to, she applied only there and got accepted. Before she graduated, I told her what kind of job I wanted her to get, and that's the type of job she found. She did get married a little bit later than I liked, but oh well. She only listened to you because she knew you'd make her life miserable if she didn't. She didn't have the energy to keep fighting back. She resents you for controlling her life so much. What do you know? She's not like James. She willingly listens to what I tell her. She just pretended to be happy about your pregnancy because she's nice. She probably seemed happy on the surface, but was dying on the inside. I know my daughter better than anyone. <laughs> oh, do you? Because she told me she's actually given up on having children. What? She told me to tell you that. She also said that she doesn't want anything to do with you anymore. What are you talking about? I just saw her last week. 
I saw her? You mean you showed up at her place after dinner and demanded to be let in, right? Did she really say she doesn't want kids anymore? Is that true? Yeah, it is. She said she was scared to bring a child into this world if you were going to be its grandmother. That's ridiculous. She's been holding it in for a while, but she's reached her breaking point. She was appalled and disgusted when she heard you were going to try and do something to harm me and my baby. That's what pushed her over the edge. She said she never wanted to see you again. Hang on. This can't be happening. None of my calls to her are going through. She's probably pressing ignore when you call. Or she just blocked your number. Whatever. I'll just go talk face to face with her. You could try, but I don't think you'll have much luck. They moved to a new apartment yesterday. What? How do you know that? Because she asked me to help her pack and move. She said she wanted a fresh start, away from you and your toxic influence. You're lying through your teeth. You're trying to turn her against me because you're jealous of our bond. No, I'm not. You're the one who's lying to yourself. You don't have a bond with her. You have a leash. You've been treating her like a puppet, not a daughter. How dare you talk to me like that? You don't know anything about me or my daughter. You're just a selfish, ungrateful, manipulative woman who's trying to ruin our family. How could she after everything I've done for her? I let her down the path to success. It sounds like that's just what you wanted her to do, not what she actually wanted. It was all for her. I lost my mother at a really young age. When I got married, I was so excited to technically gain a mother again, even if it was just a mother-in-law. More than anything, I wanted to have a good relationship with you. Boy, I was such an idiot for thinking that. Now I don't want anything to do with a psycho like you. Who are you calling a psycho, you little witch? You, you psycho. Or maybe you'd like it if I called you human garbage instead. James and I are taking a page out of Camilla's book. We don't want to have anything to do with you ever again. We don't need anyone that would even think about let alone be ready to harm our child. Did you move too? Where are you? I'm coming to find you. Oh, <laughs> did you show up at our old apartment? Like I said, you're a psycho. I'd rather die than tell you where we are. Let's just say it's far away from you. This is the last time I'm ever going to be in contact with you. Hang on. If Camilla isn't having kids, I don't care. I'll spoil your child instead of hers. So stop saying you're gonna cut me out of your lives and move back into your old place. I don't care if you give this kid one million dollars. You're not coming near us. But why? Are you that stupid? Because you're a lunatic. We're never going back there and we're never seeing you again. Where did I go wrong? All of my children are abandoning me. At least you got that part right. I talked with Camilla before we both decided to move. We knew that if only one of us moved away, it would make the other's life harder because of you. That's why we decided to leave at the same time. This is how my children repay me for giving them everything. I think we've all done more than enough for you, especially James and Camilla. They've been sending you money, haven't they? This isn't just about money. Oh, I know that. It would have been much simpler if it were only about money. We've learned from our mistakes, and James and I now have an example to teach our child about what kind of person not to become in the future. Not to mention, you've taught me what not to do as a mother. Just hang on! Maybe you should rethink things before you do something you'll regret later. I really have thought about what I've done. I can't stand the thought of being on my own. There's nothing I care less about than you struggling to survive on your own. Don't come near my family or Camilla's ever again. No, I don't want to be on my own. I want my family. The only excitement I had was waiting for my first grandchild. I have nothing left to live for if I can't see my grandchild. What are you saying? You always have your tennis lessons to look forward to. Once your fake injury heals, I'm sure you'll be back out on the court in no time. I don't care about tennis. Well then, I guess you really are out of luck then. Don't you think it's a little ironic? After all that energy you put into tennis, in the end, you're the one who got served. After hitting rock bottom, my mother-in-law accepted the harsh reality of being abandoned by her family. There were suspicions that she might have planned to harm me physically to cause a miscarriage, making it look like an accident. However, this is just speculation, and we can't be sure of her intentions. She turned to fortune telling, spending most of her savings, desperately trying to win her family back, but failed to do so. Her attempts to borrow money from relatives were fruitless, and now she's struggling to repay her debts. Meanwhile, I gave birth to our beautiful son, and life has settled down. Camilla's stance on having kids changed after the pressure from her mother disappeared. We talked and decided to try again, leading to a successful pregnancy. She's now seven months along and feeling both nervous and excited about becoming a mother. In a way, I'm grateful for my mother-in-law's extreme behavior 
as it brought happiness to both families. I'm determined to be the best mother to my son, making sure he has the best life possible, in contrast to what my mother-in-law did.